May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> that great Archbishop of Canterbury, Archbishop Ramsey, was asked to give a series of lectures on Christian ethics, because people are always asking, how should I live my Christian life? And his opening lecture was on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. St. Paul would have approved because today's first reading begins not just with Christ's resurrection, but also ours. He says, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. For Paul, we have already become sharers in Christ's resurrection by our baptism and by our weekly communion, our feeding on the food of immortality. We are sharers now in the resurrection, not simply looking forward to it. If you have been raised with Christ, then live the Christian life. So when he's saying that, he's saying that the way we live our lives is connected to the reality of sharing in Christ's resurrection. And St. Paul is not just a theoretician. He knows, because his letters are full of such things, he's no he knows that we get things wrong in our living both in heaven and earth at the same time. Resurrection for Paul is not something that happened or something that will happen but something that is a process and it does not begin before crucifixion and he says execute put to death he says whatever in you is earthly fornication impurity passion evil desire and greed which is idolatry the reason we put to death these sinful urges is not because we're afraid of going to hell, but because we are sharing now in Christ. Our lives here are about expressing that communion that we all have in Jesus, his life lived here. And I hope that you've noticed that the last sin that he mentioned in that little list the greatest sin, which is tant tantamount to idol worship, the greatest sin is greed. And we heard a very clear description of what St. Luke thinks greed is from his Gospel. He has a consistent line on greed, does St. Luke. In one of his more grotesque passages in the Acts of the Apostles, he's got a couple of believers, um, Ananias and Sapphira they're called, who are told that all good Christians have got to share all their wealth with the church, and they say, yes, we'll do that, and they don't do it. And when they're confronted with the fact that they haven't given all their money to the church, they drop down dead. It is a horrid story. So we shouldn't be surprised that St. Luke rejoices in having Jesus' teaching on wealth. And the setting is this. People are squabbling over a will. I hope you've all written yours. Anyway, they're squabbling over a will. Now, inheritance can make people astonishingly and irrationally greedy. Um, a distant aunt of mine has just died somewhere in London. I didn't know she existed, but if she lived in London, she must have a big house. And she, she died in test it, so we're all very excited. But of course, as I never knew this lady, I've got no r real right to her money. It'd be quite nice if it turns up my way. But anyway, uh, wills and inheritance do make people very, very irrational. And so Jesus tells this story of this very wealthy man who builds bigger barns. And it has this chilling line. You fool. This very night your life is demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? You can't take it with you. 
So greed is a theological issue. It's about our relationship with God. Now, for St. Paul, his understanding of our relationship with God is to do with God's nature itself. How do we share in God's nature? Communion, which is central to what we do this morning, is not just some symbolic act. It is a sharing in the very nature of God, and it is about God's generosity. That's what we know about God, shown in Jesus Christ, that he is by nature generous. And in Jesus we see God emptying himself of everything in order to share our poor human nature. And so we're also called to do likewise. Jesus' life is costly for the benefit of others. It is sacrificial and ours therefore should be the same. So, says St. Paul, greed is idolatry. It is the worshipping of the God of greed. Well, I once upon a time rather enjoyed Greek myths. And I remember that the God of the underworld, the God of the dead, Hades, was considered by those ancient Greeks to be the greedy and devouring God never satisfied, his realm could never be filled, his jaws gaping open. That's the God of the dead, the God of greed. But the God revealed in Jesus Christ, the true God, is the God of overwhelming and selfless generosity. And that is the God in whom we have a share, rescued from the devouring jaws of Hades. We can't live in London without being aware that Western society and British society has been torn by greed. We are constantly encouraged to be avaricious. Acquisitiveness is seen as the ideal and it is something that does destroy the balance of society, the very nature of Christian life. We need to remember that as Christians. And Christ calls on us to remember that if we do share in his resurrection, we need to share it in a way which is generous, sacrificial and life-giving. In the name of the risen Christ and the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen.